tried suspension system that uh, Senna that we're looking at now doesn't work, it is utterly unpredictable. Yes, it's, uh, it, 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 if it does fail, of course, it can be very dangerous indeed because the, the suspension of the car just collapses. And uh, that is one of the worries uh, that designers have and why some other teams haven't adopted it. Incidentally, the Williams team has done a lot of testing during the winter with an active suspension system car, but uh, as yet they have declared themselves not ready to race it and they're racing a conventional uh, suspension car. It's uh, one of the old problems for motor racing designers as to whether to keep it uh, simple and straightforward, which has a lot of advantages for reliability and everything else, and weight, or whether to go uh, uh, fully complicated. Anyway, Senna now under pressure, and there is Nelson Piquet in the pits already. This is very, very early. I've got the stopwatch running. We are now on lap seven, and Piquet into the pits. You can see there he is, the stopwatch running. Out he goes, and according to my stopwatch, that was 12.4 seconds, which is not a particularly quick pit stop. And of course, that means that Senna has gone into the lead. Mansell has gone up into second place. And Alain Prost has passed Teo Fabi, so Prost goes into third place. And look at this. Prost is closing. Prost is catching Mansell, who is still behind Senna, who is leading. And there in the pits is Teo Fabi, who was in fourth position. This will already be tremendous encouragement to the Woking Boast-based McLaren team who lost their star designer, John Barnard, to Ferrari at the end of last year. And the new car designed by Steve Nichols, a lot of people didn't think he would be able to design a car as well as Barnard, but he's made dramatic changes. The car looks the same. But, for instance, the air outlets, you can see, are in the side of the side pods now and not on the top. The car is lower. The tag engine, designed and built by Porsche, has been worked on. And, of course, you can never ignore Cross. And he goes through and takes second place from Nigel Mansell on lap 11. Now, we just see Cross. He got into position at the start of the straight. He got into Mansell slipstream and it was a very simple overtaking maneuver just to show past him and uh, Mansell sensibly did not try and find that. So Senna, Frost and Teo Fabi has gone missing from our lap chart. Teo Fabi, number 19, the little Italian who's had such bad luck in the Benetton over the years. There's a Ferrari to the pits and it's Alvaretto. Race order, lap 13, Senna in the lead, Cross in second place, Boutsen, who has not changed cars, in the Benetton third position. Fourth is Berger, in fifth position now is Stefan Johansson in the second McLaren, in sixth place is Nelson Piquet who's made his pit stop, and you saw Senna's hand come out of the pit cockpit, it looks to me as though he's in trouble. Cross takes the lead on lap 13, is Senna out of the Brazilian Grand Prix when he's into the pits? Yep, there it looks like Senna going for tyres as well. Of course, tyre wear will be at its worst at this stage of the race because the cars are full of fuel. They're some 50% heavier when they start the race than when they finish because of the huge fuel load. And uh, a bit of a problem on the left rear wheel there, but not a bad pit stop. 12 seconds by the Lotus team. Cross into the pits, race leader, Cross into the pits on lap 16. Seconds ticking away, the best time we've had so far is 12.4 seconds, and that was a superb McLaren pit stop. So now, race order, Bootson is in the lead, closely followed, there he is, second place man, Nelson Piquet in the winning. Third is Stefan Johansson in the McLaren. Fourth is Nigel Mansell and PK last spot. He, he reaches across to the turbo switch, turns up the boost, and the crowd roars as Nelson PK from Brazil leads the Brazilian Grand Prix on lap 17. There you see, that is extra boost. Nothing else that just enables PK to soar past Putin's pedestal. And you look at the race leader now because Nelson Piquet unobserved.
gigantic spin for one of the Minardis. It's Alessandro Nanini spinning off in the Minardi and ripping off the right rear wheel and looking to be perfectly okay. And Nelson Piquet leads. I think actually the right wheel, rear wheel had come loose beforehand and that looked like a failure to me. He stepped away because the suspension looked undamaged, so either the wheel fell off or something around it came adrift. It's good though to know that it's a British car and a British driver, Jonathan Palmer, who is the leading non-turbocharged car. He is in the Tyrrell, he's in 17th place and he was long since lapped. I've estimated that uh, if the race speeds and times go as we expect them to do here, and PK looks to me as yet he's going to the pits again. It goes back to the mathematics because, uh, and I'm quite sure that PK will have been doing a lot of calculating in his head about uh, when to time his pit stop because it is definitely a matter of choice and a critical choice which could very well determine the, out the outcome of the race. Good pit stop, 11.2 seconds, not as good as that of Alain Prost. 10.4, Nigel Mansell is leading the Brazilian Grand Prix again on lap 20, but it's all going to be down to the tyres. Yes, and uh, significantly for Mansell here, I suppose he feels very secure with Alan Prost right behind him. And remember, Prost is on a pressure set of tyres. He made his stop several laps later than Nigel Mansell. Mansell, if he's working with the same similar tactics, Prost makes his move and Prost takes the slipstream, dives past, so Alan Prost now takes over the lead. I expect that Mansell will stop again fairly soon for more tyres and it looks as if Frost is going to be able to go through the race with certainly one less tyre stop, maybe more. Nigel Mansell comes into the pits, was in second position. Start the stopwatch. This is lap 23 now. Nigel Mansell, second pit stop, fastest one we've had so far. That's at a superb stop by the Williams team. The fastest of the day so far, 9.3 seconds. And you're looking now at the battle for third position behind Nakajima's yellow Lotus, between in the red and white McLaren, the Swedish driver Stefan Johansson, and right behind him, number six, ex-race leader, ex-Brazilian Grand Prix winner Nelson Piquet. Piquet, as I remind you, had two stops for tyres. He's on fairly new rubber in comparison with Johansson. They are on lap 26 out of 61. They both blast past Nakajima, who moves over and lets them through. And PK is going for second now. There he goes, the proud roll, but Stefan Johansson holds him off. And PK was going for third, of course, not second, I apologize. And Senna's just got into the pits. He peeled off the circuit, yeah. and there he is. Heading into the pit, so Senna goes for his second tyre change, onto his third set of tyres. And a very efficient pit stop indeed by the Lotus team. So now on lap 29, with Senna having gone into the pits in second position, that means to say that the two McLarens, Prost and Johansson, are in first and second places, but are they going to be for very much longer? Because there's Piquet on the left in third position, showing the nose of his Williams Honda in the mirrors of Stefan Johansson's McLaren, shaping up to try and get past. Stefan Johansson will have nothing of it on lap 29. We are almost at half distance of the 1987 Brazilian Grand Prix, leading Alain Prost. Second, Johansson there. Third, Nelson Piquet in fourth position now is Nigel Mansell with Senna having gone into the pits. Fifth is Berger. Sixth is Patrese. Ah, look at that! Johansson into the pits and Piquet goes up into the second position. But Prost, with his cushion of some 25 seconds, is in a happy position of being able to nurse his tyres and not to drive the car about too much. He's under no pressure at all. But I would expect him to come in in the next three or four laps, take on one more set, and he'll be hoping that he can get in and out of the pit and still be in the lead, leaving his rivals not only behind him, but probably with one more stop to make themselves. And into the pit goes Prost. Now, this is...
is a crucial pit stop. Start the stopwatch now.